In this video, we're going to look at extending an existing class to enable it to use more of the Python underscore underscore magic methods uh, and extending this class. The class is the symbol class. This was designed for use in the context of building a context-free grammar and uh, reading a context-free grammar from disk and ultimately converting that grammar into Chomsky normal form. All right, so let's take a look at the Python data model. So the website here is docs.python.org. We're dealing with Python 3, so we go slash 3, slash reference, slash data model dot HTML. Previously, we looked at the hash and equals methods. We've also looked at the str method and, of course, the constructor. Okay, so let's first go ahead and clean, clean up the class just a smidge, and then we'll go back and add a couple of more methods. So by convention, uh, we want value to be a string representation of a terminal or non-terminal symbol in a context-free grammar. Alternatively, we're going to allow for the value none to represent the empty string, or epsilon. So let's go ahead and here first check to see if value is none. If value is none, then self.value is also going to be none. Otherwise, self.value will be the string representation of value value is a string, this doesn't do much for us, but if value is something else, which it shouldn't be, but could, could conceivably, uh, then we want to convert it to its string representation. All right. Next, let's see what else we can do in the Python data model. Let's go down to the section equals equals. So these are the rich comparison operators. We've all already implemented this one, which allows us to do to have equals equals have good meaning. We've implemented hash, which allows our object to be used inside uh, complex data structures that require hashing, including a set. Let's see what else is on here. Boolean. So if we want uh, our object, if it makes sense for our object to be convertible to a boolean, uh, then we would want to implement uh, the underscore underscore bool operator. Uh, this is going to implement truth, uh, truth value testing. This would allow our object, this would allow us to do things like this. if x print our symbol is not epsilon else print our symbol is epsilon okay Let's try running that. Our symbol is not epsilon. So there must be a default implementation of uh, the Boolean conversion. Let's try changing it to make it more uh, sensible. So def bool self. And it turns out that the implementation that we want is what we have down here for is epsilon. So let's just copy that. Okay, so if self.value is none, return false. Otherwise, return true. And here, we could return not.
So we can convert self to its Boolean value and then return the opposite. Okay, and if we change x to be none, then our symbol is epsilon. Okay, so this allows us to use x in uh, truth valued statements. Uh, and in those conditions, the bool method gets automatically called. Okay, what about length? So this is going to return the length of an object. Well, what would it make sense for our lengths to be? Well, if the object is epsilon, then that's going to be conceptually an empty string, so we should return a length of zero. Otherwise, we should return the length of the string that is its value. So. Now we could take advantage of the fact that we have this implemented, or we could so we could call either bool or is epsilon, or just say if self, and if in this case uh, this would implicitly convert self to a boolean value by calling bool and then returning true or false depending on whether the value is none. Okay. So if self returns true, then we have something that is not an epsilon, and we can return the length of the string value. The, the length of self.value or just string. So here we take self, pass it to the string function, this will call this function, and because we know it's not epsilon, we'll return this. If it is epsilon, then the length should be zero. Okay? And we could correspondingly clean up this code to use bool in this format instead of this. It's going to be equivalent. So we could say if self return string self.value else return epsilon. We could simplify this even more because we know, based on the constructor that we've constructed here, that self.value is always going to be a string if it's not none. Since we've already tested here to make sure it's not none, we know that we have a string, and so we could, if we wanted to, just return self.value knowing that it's always going to be a string. Okay, so now we've got the init method, the equals method, the hash method, the string method, the bool method, and the length method. And that's probably all of the built-in methods that we need at this point.